we grew from zero again obviously yeah. to around six hundred thousand dollars a month within six months wow. of starting the business and nice. when we grew to that level we still didn't have a proper manufacturer there were no manufacturers in australia that could fulfill that level of uh at like tea orders um and I would literally think to myself I'd be like how do Lipton do it how do they put all that <laughs> you know they've got so much tea and how do they put it in all of those tea bags and there's got to be a way to do this obviously yeah. I had absolutely no idea really what I was doing it was just kind of problem solving on my feet there was a disaster tell me about tell us about this so we went over to China and originally the initial orders that we placed with our manufacturer were great. We were getting them back, we were sending them back to Australia, we were getting them quality assured in Australia as well as in China. We placed a really large order of tea, which was the first mistake. I just thought, okay, we're always running in and out of stock. Imagine how much faster we could grow and how much more money we could make and how great it would be if I just had a year's worth of tea. And so I placed an order for a year's worth of tea, which was over a million US dollars worth of tea at the time. I think wow. it was actually around 1.3 million US dollars. So we were growing very quickly and yeah. I was like, okay, so I'm going to go work out how to get all of this tea at once. And we received the order finally. We held it in a warehouse in Hong Kong for a while. That cost money. We shipped it to Australia. That cost more money. Got held in customs for a week. That was another $80,000. Then we finally opened up the tea. Super excited to start shipping it out. We'd just run out of our uh, Australian manufacturer's product. And the tea was compost, basically. It was disgusting I wouldn't even let my team touch it without gloves on it had metal bolts in it oh it had springs in it you could just see it was wet and dirty and disgusting and we sent it off to be tested just you know for a laugh and it had E. coli and all kinds of bacteria in disaster. it it disaster. was an absolute disaster so how did you recover from that 1.3 million dollars at first I you know, handled it in the way that everybody would. Cry. I freaked out a little. <laughs> I cried a bit. Uh, I remember my general manager and I were in a car and we were behind a truck that had building supplies on it and some wood was very precariously placed and we were like, do your worst wood. Oh. We're done. <laughs> we don't care. Fall off the truck. Get <laughs> us. But, like, it's the come end. at us. Um, but I called a friend of mine in Hong Kong and he's a lawyer and he's a, like a litigator in Hong Kong and he's very high up and I was like, okay, Andrew, what chance do I have of uh, being able to, you know, sue our supplier to be able to get a refund or get new product that isn't disgusting? Uh, and he was like, basically little to no chance. So I knew as of then that I just had to kind of cut my losses and get over it very, very quickly. And that did become kind of one of my biggest learnings was to fail fast. Like resilience is how quickly you can get over your failures, basically. And that is what you need when you're starting something out and you're nice. constantly problem solving there's constant problems all over the place you're constantly putting out fires <laughs>